another special episode of DHNN. We're your hosts for this week. I'm Ella Gates. And I'm Bella Rabello. On this week's episode, we have some insight on the basketball court dedication to Coach Gaspar on Saturday, January 7th. Plus, we even have a special interview with the Director of Teaching, Mr. Tebow, on the portrait of a learner. News, weather, sports, and much more. DHNN DHNN starts starts right right now. now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here are this week's announcements. Students, please return any and all loaner Chromebooks and loaner charging cables that you've borrowed from the LMC as soon as possible. If you need to renew the borrow or have questions, please see us in the LMC. The last day to purchase a yearbook will be Friday, January 27th. To order, simply scan the QR code on any poster in the hallway or use the link that your class advisors have posted in your Google Classroom. AP exam registration and payment timeline, February 17th, 2023, balance due. Attention class of 2023, if you're interested in participating in this year's Dartmouth Finest on March 17th, please submit an interest form no later than Wednesday, January 18th. The form can be found on your class's Google Classroom or Instagram. If you have any questions, please see Senora Lamba in C7 or Ms. Thomas in the LMC. Now we will have a peek into the Portrait of a Learner interview with Mr. Tebow. He sat down with our very own Ryan Arruda to give us an insight on the district's view on secondary education. Let's have a look. Thank you, Ella and Bella. Now I'm very fortunate to introduce our Director of Teaching and Learning at the secondary level of the Dartmouth Public Schools District, Mr. Ross Tebow, who is also, of course, our uh, Dartmouth High School former principal. How are you doing today, Mr. Tebow? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thank you so much. And it's, it's so great to be back uh, here speaking with you. Haven't done this in a little while, but certainly I always enjoyed uh, chatting with you uh, in the past. And so I'm glad to be here today to talk about the portrait of a learner. Of course. So for those that may not know what portrait of a learner is, it is an event that uh, the Dartmouth Public Schools was able to take on in early December. So do you want to take the uh, people watching through what Portrait of a Learner really is and the experiences that the students were able to partake in? Sure. So th- we actually haven't gotten um, the student voice yet. It's, that's a major part of the process. This process is really going to be ongoing throughout the course of the year. So what a Portrait of a Learner is, it's actually... Um, an identification, a um, explicit communication around what skills and competencies, you know, what do we want our students to know and be able to do and to be able to demonstrate um, that shows, uh, you know, how they've been prepared for life beyond um, high school. If you and know. would that be used by administrators and teachers to make a conscious decision on what to kind of base curriculums and knowledges off of? 
Yeah, so it, it's not something students do one time. It's not like a test, right? It's really, think of it more as every school has like a mission statement or core values and beliefs. It's really fulfilling those things, those values. It's bringing to life those values. And it certainly does have implication for assessment like you talked about. Again, if we say, you know, the Dartmouth Public Schools thinks every student should be a, uh, pro you know, a critical problem solver. Let's just use that as an example. Well, then we need to say, okay, well, how do we determine whether or not our students are able to demonstrate that? And then that has implications for assessment because a test is probably not the way you assess whether you can problem solve or of not, course. right? Um, providing, you know, and it's just, again, um, the important piece is this is not, you know, one person's vision. This is the community vision. And so um, it started in December, as you alluded to, Ryan, um, we have a district strategic planning team that has representation from every building in the district. So we have um, every elementary, Cushman uh, Elementary and preschool as well, the middle school and the high school, an administrator and a teacher, counselor. So we have a variety of voices from, the, from our school district there, along with the superintendent, myself, Mrs. Paveo, who's the director of teaching and learning at the uh, elementary level. We all convened and did some um, brainstorming and, and um, envisioning work. Um, with Envision Learning Partners, who is, is the district's partner in this work. And at the end, what you'll get is a graphic that really outlines this is what uh, being a learner in the Dartmouth Public Schools means. Well, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Ross Tebow. Um, definitely uh, appreciate you coming back down to the, you know, old Dartmouth High School. <laughs> um, so, um, I, I, you know, graduating, I definitely can't wait to see what Portrait of a Learner will do for these students. Um, and just providing, you know, a base. Uh, I have, of course, you know, like younger family in Dartmouth. So um, just knowing that the Dartmouth Public Schools is doing the best it can for its students, providing as much as it can, um, it's heartwarming for me. And it definitely shows that Dartmouth is a lead community um, in Massachusetts. Uh, as a state, nationally, and globally as well. Hi, I'm Ryan Aruda and I'm here with your DHNN weather forecast from January 16th to the 22nd. Monday it's going to be sunny with a high of 41 degrees. Tuesday we're going to be looking at some rain with a high of 47 degrees. As we continue through our week, it's going to be looking like Wednesday. It's going to be a high of 52, cloudy. Thursday, we're going to have some more clouds with a high of 47. Friday, some rain with a high of 44 degrees. Saturday, more rain with a high of 43. And Sunday, once again, some rain with a high of 44 degrees. Back to you. On January 7th, we had a basketball court dedication to Coach Gaspar. Here are some of the highlights. People ask me, why do I, why did I do it for so long? As Ben said, because I enjoy it. They make it fun, okay? And the challenges are every day. A challenge Steve Gaspar gladly accepted for 41 years. Today we honor him for his many achievements with the naming of the basketball court. The Gaspar name has become synonymous with Dartmouth High School basketball. 28 seasons as the Indians head coach, compiling 324 wins and 19 trips to the postseason. His lasting legacy will be more than just the name on the court or the big wins from the sideline. 
It'll be about the impact he's had with his fellow coaches, players, and most importantly, his family. I'd like to thank, uh, obviously, my family, my family, my wife, all my, uh, my kids. Um, without them, uh, they sacrificed a lot for me. Um, I would leave the house 6.30 in the morning, come home 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, because we had a game in Barnstable or DY or Attleboro. And they sacrificed a lot of time. And again, I, I appreciate that. Having your dad as the high school basketball coach at Dartmouth High was one of the best experiences of my basketball career. He taught me so much about the game of basketball. He was the greatest coach I played for. He pushed me to be better on and off the court. Till this day, he's still coaching. He's coaching his grandkids. Though I was not on one of his teams, I would say I was coached by him my entire life. He would give me the confidence, the support, um, and he was brutally honest when I needed it most. Uh, but most importantly, he would always encourage me to find my passion both on and off the court and to just go after it. And I am truly grateful for that as it pushed me to become the person I was meant to be. He definitely taught us all, not just me, but my siblings, the importance of commitment um, and that whatever you do, you give it 150% of your time and energy and you don't quit no matter how hard, no matter how hard it is. And that's something that he really ingrained in not just me, but my siblings as well. His accomplishments certainly speak for themselves, but I think it's that passion, the caringness and wanting to, to make the kids better and make the environment around them better for them to thrive is really something that I think Steve shined off the court. He deserves it. He gave everything he had, not to just his players, but the student body and the community around him. He, of course, will be humble and not take the credit, but it is well-deserved. And I am very proud of not only him as a coach, but him as my dad. Clear lineage of success that permeates through the Gasper name, um, from Steve to his wife, Kathy, to his children who are accomplished in a lot of the sports that they've done, both at the high school and beyond. And I think when you think of the Coach Steve Gasper court, you think of commitments to excellence. Um, and I think that simply um, kind of signifies what that means for, for Steve, his legacy that he's leaving on the court and the legacy he's leaving in the Dartmouth community. I think it's really special for my grandfather to be recognized in this way after all of the time and effort that he put into coaching. Um, I can't even name how many students that he's coached, but he's coached decades of students his family as well, his children, um, and I'm just glad to see him be uh, acknowledged in Dartmouth High School history. Hi, Grandpa. I wanted to say congratulations on getting the Dartmouth court named after you. I know that you were a great coach and still are and have helped me improve a lot. Hi Grandpa, it's Lillian. So happy for you. Congratulations. You deserve it. You're a great coach. Congratulations Grandpa. You're such a great coach. You always knew how to push us to work our hardest. Because he will let me come to his basketball practice and, let, and I will always get to help him out. Love you Grandpa. We love you Grandpa. The proudest moment for my dad as a coach I don't think there's a specific one for him. I think there's multiple. I think definitely coaching his son was one. And I think just in general, just being able to coach and teach kids a sport that he loves. Dad, congratulations and a well-deserved honor to have your name on the court at Dartmouth High. During your coaching career, you sacrificed a lot to make sure your players had everything they needed to be successful on and off the court. This is now your time to be recognized for everything you have done for Dartmouth High.
It's time for everyone's favorite part, the lunch show. No school on Monday because it's Martin Luther King Day. Tuesday, chicken bacon ranch sub with spicy spiral fries. Wednesday, baked CD, beef meatballs, and roasted green beans. Thursday, general sauce chicken with lo mein and veggies and roasted broccoli. Friday, beef burrito, cheddar cheese, fiesta rice, and fresh salsa. Well, that's it for this week's episode of DHNM. Tune in next time where we have an amazing interview with the Dartmouth High School Key Club on Coogan's Corner. We also have a chance to see some of the new equipment updates down on the 8th floor. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more episodes of your number one Dartmouth High News program, DHNN. I'm Ella Gates. And I'm Bella Rubello. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.